Amen. Good morning. Let's go ahead and get started. For those who don't know me, my name is Pastor Anthony. I serve as the pastor, amen, of the new church. The new church, we're located, amen, physically. Our building is at 2817 Utah Street in St. Louis, Missouri. We worship every Sunday at 940 a.m., but we are also located globally around anywhere that Jesus is, and that's where we are. If Jesus is there, that's where we want to be there. If Jesus is not there, we want to be responsible for taking Jesus there. I'm so excited for you that you got on this call this morning. I'm so excited that you took the time and you thought it not robbery, that I need to be on this devotion call. I need to be in this space. I need to set my day up for success. And I want to speak to you even before I get started. The fact that you made that initiative today, the fact that you made that move today, I'm already going to start with speaking nothing but grace and favor over your life. This will be your best day yet, not only of 2024, but the best day of your life. I'm speaking right now in the name of Jesus, that God will shine some type of miraculous sign in your life that your life will shift for the better. Even before I start my devotion, I want to put that in the atmosphere. Let's go ahead and get started, my brothers and sisters. Um, On Sunday, for those who were there, we had an inward prompting to externally declare this subject from our impact series, I Refuse to Lose. Yes, we had a prompting inwardly to externally declare that I refuse to lose. But here is the critical key to that prompting. My brothers and sisters, it was not a one-man assertion, but rather a clarion call to a community of believers in hopes that they will join in and walk in the sentiment that I refuse to lose. I'm going to say it again. It was not a one-man band assertion. I mean, I just wasn't saying I as Anthony, I as pastor refuse to lose, but rather it was a clarion call to action for a community of believers then and now in hopes that we would all join in and walk collectively in the sentiment that we refuse to lose. A refusing to lose mentality births such a courageous tenacity that will unlock the doors of untapped potential and opportunity. It literally grows the will of the wounded. I'm going to say it again. It literally grows the will of the wounded because some of us, the honest reality is, as we're trying to shift into the season of impact, we still have some wounds that we're dealing with, and sometimes those wounds Wounds prohibit or preventing us from making the next step. And so, my brothers and sisters, when you have a refusing to lose mentality, it grows your will while being wounded. And if you continue in the vein of refusing to lose, you will understand that those wounds will create victories because God will perform a supernatural surgery on those wounds and you will be healed. That all the blood that you lost from those wounds will be transformed by the blood of Jesus. And the reason why some stuff hurt and we're bleeding figuratively is because God want to decontaminate the blood that was in us and so God will allow us to go through some stuff so God can transfuse us with his blood so that we can be better because there's power in the blood of Jesus. My brothers and sisters, you did not endure all you endured just to give up. I'm going to say it again. You did not endure all you endured just to give up. But what happens is it reveals to you that your pain had a purpose, and that purpose was, get this now, to build a bridge from not yet to absolutely so. I got to say that again. Your pain had a purpose, and that purpose is to build a bridge from not yet to absolutely so. In other words, there's two sides of the ledger as pertaining to a progressive believer. There's a side that we stand on that says not yet, and we're trying to get from not yet to the other side, which suggests absolutely 
so. And the way we get from the not yet to absolutely so is we must be willing to endure the struggle that it takes to get to absolutely so. Some of us will be perpetually stuck at the not yet because we're not willing to push past the pain. But the good thing about God, my brothers and sisters, that God is the best pain reliever that anyone can imagine. So God will literally walk with you while you're in pain, pushing you from your not yet to your absolutely so. And I want to decree and declare on this ninth day of January that everybody that can hear this call this morning or shall listen to it in future times, that it's time for us to be courageous enough to walk from our not yet to our absolutely so. There are some absolutely so moments that God wants to give you in this year, but you must be willing, my brothers and sisters, to step out on the water into the deep and say, I give my all to thee for you, God, so that you can move me from my not yet to my absolutely so. And so, family, on Sunday, I share with those who are present, and now to those on the call, the importance of writing and speaking your vision. Yes, I said it's very important that you write and speak your vision. And the reason why it's important that you write and speak your vision, it is because your vision vision is an intentional expression of what shall be. When I write my vision and when I speak my vision, I am expressing to God, I am expressing to the ecosystem, I am expressing to the universe, I'm expressing to myself that what I am writing and speaking is actually a blueprint of what shall be, not what could be and not what if be, but what will and shall be. I feel happy on this morning. And so my brothers and sisters, losers do not have vision. Losers have no vision. I'm going to say it again. If you want to lose, don't have a vision. If you want to win, my brothers and sisters, you need to step out into the writing and into the speaking of your vision. And so my brothers and sisters, with Without a doubt, if you're committed to having a vision, I declare that some stuff really going to start shifting for the better because my vision is a blueprint to living out the premise of our word for the year impact. I got to say it again, and I got to pray with you. I said a vision is our blueprint to living out the premise of our word for the year impact. Simply put, no vision no impact. No vision, no impact. But beloved, when your vision is solid, then you can boldly go to God in expectation. Y'all remember that in point three? You can boldly go to God in expectation. That's right. It is not can it happen. It is I expect it to happen. It is not can it happen. It is I expect it to happen. Friends, can you heighten your level of expectation? Oh, yes. I need some people on this call today to heighten their level of expectation. I'm going to say it again. I need some people on this call this morning to heighten their level of expectation. Friends, can you heighten your level of expectation this morning? Can you expect for your 2024 to be a year of shifting, a year of growing, a year of sowing, a year of advancing, a year of grade A performances, a year of comeback, a year of debt relief, a year of production, a year of wins, a year of fruitful relationships, a year of strategy, a year of revelation, celebration, anticipation, dedication, participation, and adulation. I'm going to say that again. A year of revelation, celebration, Celebration, anticipation, dedication, participation, and adulation. One more time, a year of revelation, celebration, anticipation, dedication, participation, and adulation. But to top it all off, this will be a year of impact. So, yes, friends, it can be all of that if we engage in the most critical piece of it all. Point two of the sermon, execution. Yes, it can be all of that if we engage in the most critical piece of it all, execution. That's right. No more just talking about it, but match energy of being about it. Say it with me, church, as I get ready to pray. 
I am an executor. Come on, open up your mouth right now and say, I am an executor. Come on, church, open up your mouth and say, I am an executor. Come on, come on, open up your mouth right now, decree and declare, I am an executor. Come on, open up your mouth. Come on, come on. Can't nobody hear you but me. Open up your mouth and declare I am an executor. Come on, declare I'm an executor. That I will no longer sit on the sidelines waiting for stuff to happen. But I'm going to use my God-given ability to make this stuff happen. That I'm no longer going to sit on the sideline in hopes of what can be. But with the power of execution that God put inside of me, that I'm going to move to it shall be. By vision, I will write. My vision I will speak. My vision I will execute. I will ask God to lead me into the right spaces and places. I will ask God to shift me into the right atmospheres. I will ask God to lead me to the right doors, the right doors with the righteous keys, those keys that he left that whatever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever we loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Come on, people of God. Come on, Holy Ghost. Fill me up now for this moment. Fill me up for this declaration. Fill me up now, God, for this prayer moment. Forgive me for all of my sins in the name of Jesus. God, but I pray for everybody on this call right now. I pray, God, first of all, for a mindset shift. God, there's still somebody hear me, but their mind has not matched me. I need their ears to ma- I need their ears to match their mind, and I need their ears and mind to match this energy. God, I know that, God, you put us so close anointing in the house over the new church, that everybody that's impacted by the new church, they're so close, but God, you're saying the next step has to be on them, that they must be bold enough to step out the boat like Peter did, that even though, God, Peter took his eyes off you at one point, they stepped out the boat, or he stepped out the boat, and God, when he stepped out the boat, you still caught his hand. Lord, catch our hand this morning. Lord, allow our hand not to go to places that it should not be. Allow our hand not to visit spaces that it shall not visit. Touch our mouths now. The filthiness that comes out of our mouths. God, let it be replicated un unwillingly, God, but Lord, let us, God, reinforce the vigor of powerful declaration that this tongue, God, that we use will be used for the edification of our life, that we will no longer complain and no longer uh, degradize the moment in which you're trying to shift us to, but God, we will take that pain as a bridgeway of the not so, not yet to the absolutely so, and so God, I pray now, I pray for everybody on this call, I pray for their mind now. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. I pray on this morning at 545 on this Tuesday morning, I pray for shifting in the mind. I don't know why you got me staying there, God, but there's somebody on this call, God, that their mind is not where their heart is. Their heart want to move, but their mind is still thinking what they can't do. And so enemy now, I declare you off of their mind now. I impart God into them now. Come on, Holy Ghost. Touch places that I cannot see. Move to places that I cannot go to. God, touch the crevices, crevices of their negativity, the emotional trauma that they've been through, the psychological trauma that they've been through, the physical trauma that they've been through. Oh, God, the stuff that we can see of the natural eye, the stuff we can see with the natural eye. God, the stuff I can't hear with my natural ears. But God, let the revelatory word speak to them now. God, show them how you want to speak to them. Let them not always depend on the preacher to hear from you. But God, let he or she that has an ear, let them hear God. Let them hear who they're supposed to be with. Let them hear who they're supposed to drop. Let them hear what job they're supposed to apply for. Let them know what class they're supposed to take. Let them know what business they supposed to start. Let them know, God, the ways they supposed to manage their money. Let them know, God, the husband that they should pray for and the wife that they should pray for. Let them know how to parent better, how to live better, how to serve better. Oh, come on up in here, Holy Spirit. We didn't get up this morning.
starting to play with the enemy. We didn't get up this morning to be losers. We are winners. We refuse to lose. In the mighty name of Jesus, that crooked boss, God, deliver them now because we cannot be hindered by people who we work with. We cannot be hindered by co-workers. God, we're going into work today with our head lifted up, unbothered, because we know, God, that greater is you that is in us is greater than the enemy that's in this world. And so, God, we thank you now because I feel a shifting on this call. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh in this place. Fall fresh on this call. Fall fresh on our hearts. Fall fresh on our minds. I decree and declare, God, that this would not be another year of the same old, same old. I decree and declare, God, that this would not be another year of a lack of fortitude and of a lack of progression. We won't stay there no more, God. Lord, help us move. And if we don't have enough sense to move, God, you move us out yourself. Kick us out of places we don't belong. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh, God, I thank you. I thank you. I pray for that woman today, that a woman who's been carrying a burden and who's been carrying a certain amount of pain. They're smiling in person, but they're hurt privately. God, I pray now. I pray that you touch her. Touch her, God. I pray for that brother now. I pray that his, his dimensions, God, I pray, God, that he would come up to be the man of God that you call him to be, and that a woman would come up to be the woman of God that you called her to be. But I hear God in the spirit of the word capacity. Yes, expand our capacity. Grow our capacity beyond measure. In the name of Jesus, God, there's some stuff we want that the highest reality is. We don't have the capacity for it. So expand our capacity. But God, I also hear the word acceleration. God said church is about to accelerate some stuff, some stuff, God, that you weren't supposed to get for another two years. It's not coming just this year. Some of that stuff is coming before the month end. And God, as this is the month of consecration, I pray, God, that we don't wait to January 21st and 22nd. But God, I pray that we start preparing ourselves because, God, there is joy in preparation. There is healing in preparation that we begin already now to discontinue unholy relationships. We can't keep holding on to stuff that is unrighteous and unholy. We can't keep carrying dead weight into this new prosperous year. This can't be a year of impact, God, if we're carrying dead weight. And God, now I pray for the burial of dead weight. No, God, I pray for the figures of cremation of dead weight, that it will disintegrate and that it will be no more. Dead weight, you will not know our name. Dead weight, you will not know our mind. Dead weight, you will not know our heart. Dead weight, you will not know anything about us. Oh, Master God, we decree and declare now that this will not just be the same old, same old, whole spirit of the living God. I pray now for the new church. I pray for everything that has been written on the vision, the things that the partner heard this last Sunday and the things they don't even know about it. I pray, God, that your provision would be like a prick and a hammer, and it would hammer hard that, God, we will break up the final ground, and we will break up the final ground, that souls will be delivered, that souls will be set free. We declare, God, not by our might, but you said we're the house of miracles, and I'm praying right now, God, that miracles would be evident in the life of our church, that God, people will come just so that they can experience you in a way that they've never experienced you before. We pray, God, for exposure. Oh, yada, I said we pray for exposure. The exposure, God, that social media can't do. But, God, we pray for exposure that you would allow our ministry to get into the eyes, into the ears of this community. 
In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. And God, I will conclude this prayer by pleading the blood of Jesus. The blood that reaches from the highest mountain and flows from the lowest valley. That blood, God, that gives us strength from day to day. It will never lose its power. And so I plead the blood of Jesus now. I plead the blood of Jesus now. I plead the blood of Jesus now. The blood the blood, the blood, the blood of our health, the blood of our mindset, the blood of our heart, the blood of our day, the blood, the blood, the blood of our finances. Yes, God, the blood of our finances. Lord, loose the financial burden off of us. God, open up doors and extra income streams. God, that we shall live like those who don't know you live, but we will live better because we got the Holy Ghost, the blood, the blood, the blood. The blood of our kids, the blood of our college babies, the blood of our school babies, the blood, the blood of the mindset of those who want to take innocent lives, the blood, God, over the spirit of unhousing those who are without home, the blood, God, the blood, the blood, oh yes, the blood, there's power in 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 the blood. Blood, power in the blood, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, it shall never lose its power. Man can lose its power, woman can lose its power, but the blood of Jesus can never lose its power. I pray over every household now, I pray over every marriage now, I pray over every aspiring marriage now, I pray over a single heart, every young adult, I pray over the young adults that you're connected to the new church, God, that you would take the vision and that energy inside of them that you would continue to grow. God, that they would be an example to this dying world. There's nothing like hungry young adults on fire for God. Oh, yes, God. But I pray over their mind that God, if they take off, that they will remain a level of humility because, God, what you're about to take them, God, if they stay humble, they'll bust doors open that man thought they couldn't do. And so, God, God, we thank you now. I need you hollering up in here, church. I need you open up in your mouth. You didn't get up this morning. Can't nobody hear you. I need you to close this prayer with a thank you. Come on, tell the Lord thank you. Tell him thank you for what he's done. Tell him thank you for everything he's going to do. Come on, open up your mouth, church, and tell him thank you. Let the church say thank you. Come on. Come on, tell him thank you. Somebody need to plead the blood with me. Somebody need to say thank you. But I need other folks pleading the blood. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There is power, power, power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonders working power. In the precious blood of the Lamb, there is power. Ayarabasa. Power. One just working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power. Power. One just working power. I thank you, God. In the precious blood of the land, there is power, power, wonderful working power. We don't need a musician. We can sing to ourselves. In the blood of the land, there is power, power. Who I just learned in power. Who I see your presence, God. In the precious blood of the land, I need the hope. I need thee. Yeah. Every hour, I need thee. Oh. Oh, bless. I see your power, God. 
Nina, my Savior, Lord, I, I come. You better go take a man of your day today, church. To I come to thee. You got to take a man of this day. Don't let another day of this year go without your command in the name of Jesus. I need thee. Oh, I'm going to let you go. I, I, I need thee. Yeah. Every hour. I, I need thee. Oh, oh, bless me now, my Savior, Lord, I, Lord, I come to, I come to thee, thank you, Lord. And we ask God that you would seal this devotion and prayer with nothing but power. And that we would go in peace. And that literally our lives would never be the same again. In Jesus' name, amen.